The new patch is finally here, and that means a new meta. Well, we hope. Anyway, with 915 underway, we peered into our crystal ball to give you some predictions on the best specs to main this patch. We consulted some of the best players in Shadowlands to find out what is hot and what is cold in the second half of Season 2. So if you want to find out what you should be maining this patch, stick around because this one's for you. We'll start off with melee DPS and go over the best of the best for 915. We're going to shock you with this one, but there is a new god of melee in the new patch, Fury Warrior. <laughs> Kidding, of course. Sorry, Swifty. Yes, it should come as no surprise that Arms Warriors continues to dominate in the late season. Outside of a slight nerf to the Kyrian Legendary, the spec didn't really see any changes in 915. The things that made Warriors broken are still broken. Warriors are a Swiss Army knife of anti-fun counters to every single offensive spell on the enemy team. With the sheer number of melee on the ladder and the growing popularity of RMP, we will likely see Warriors as the best melee DPS all the way up to Season 3. If you watched our recent RBG tier list video, we put Warrior in the S tier. The utility of Spear of Bastion combined with an AoE Mortal Strike makes them super strong in teamfights, and they are a staple in many high-rated lineups. It's difficult to pinpoint what exactly makes Warrior so strong. It's not just one thing, it's not just two things, it is everything combined. With Covenant swaps more accessible this patch, we might see a bit more experimentation with Venther and Night Fae, but for now, we expect to see most Warriors still playing Kyrian or Necrolord. Next up, we're going to do something bold, and for the first time in a hot minute, we're going to tell you to main Sub Rogue this patch. Honestly, the field of strong melee is quite jam-packed this season, and you can't really go wrong no matter what melee you decide to main, but this patch is different. Sub is looking really strong as RMP is starting to dominate the ladder on both EU and NA. This might have something to do with the recent nerfs to Fleshcraft, but regardless, it seems RMP is here to stay. And in case Sub isn't your thing, no problem. Both Assassination and Outlaw are looking really strong. Both of these off specs work really well in 2v2, and since rogues continue to be a necessity in RBGs, we really think they are worth picking up this patch. Rounding out our melee, we have Windwalker Monks. Once again, melee across the board are really strong. From Arms Warriors all the way to Survival Hunters, all melee DPS seem to be high tier this patch. Oh, and by the way, if you want our full melee tier list update, be sure to subscribe since we will be releasing that sometime soon. Windwalker Monk saw some minor nerfs as patched to both Dance of Chi Ji and Bone Dust Brew, but that doesn't seem to matter too much as the spec continues to dominate in 915. Windwalker Monks are sort of the hybrid between Warriors and Rogues, offering some really dynamic peeling options while also having enormous kill potential during setups. This has slotted them well into the Shadowlands meta, where they can fit into many different comp options. And on top of that, they have an increasingly popular role in RBGs, where they are one of the highest tier melee DPS. So if you want a well-rounded Shadowlands experience, Monk might just be right for you. Before we get into range DPS, we want to hear from you. Are you playing the new patch? If so, what do you think? Let us know in the comments below. While you're doing that, let's move on to range DPS and the top 3 specs to main in 915. Fire Mage continues to be one of the best pure damage specs in the entire game. Despite a nerf to Triune Ward, mages are still relatively tanky in the Season 2 meta. But tankiness aside, their primary role in PvP is still the same. They are the absolute kings of setting the pace in Arena, having one of the most reliable CC options with DB Sheep, and some of the best defensive coverage for their team with spammable CC. Both of these things combined makes them one of the most versatile DPS in the game, slotting them well with any other top tier melee or ranged class. Even though the Covenant switching is easier, don't expect to see many mages moving away from Night Fae anytime soon. Unless, of course, you're playing Frost, in which case you might want to pick up Necrolord since it makes your Frost Bolts pretty nasty. Speaking of Covenant swapping, we hyped up Necrolord Shadow Priest in a recent video, and they are also joining mages as one of the best classes to main in the new patch. The spec saw some very minor buffs in the patch, and the tools that have kept it broken remain fairly untouched. Shadowlands really solidified Shadow as the top tier damage support spec, which has helped slot them into many top tier setups and comp archetypes. While they aren't exactly top tier in RBGs, they are still pretty good, and with the ability to have a top tier healer as an off spec, we really think Shadow is worth maining for the rest of Season 2. Rounding out our range DPS to main in 915, we have Beast Mastery Hunters. This really shouldn't come as any surprise to anyone who's queued Arena for the last few months. BM continues to dominate 3v3, not because it has some flashy mechanics that require high APM, but instead because it is just so good at dealing consistent damage. This seems to be shared between all Hunter specs, 
as both Marks and Survival are performing really well this season. So with two viable off specs, it seems like a no-brainer to main BM this season. Beastmastery routinely outdamages every other class in the game, and despite a minor damage nerf in the patch, it still seems to be doing fine. Its raw damage combined with Feral throughput has created an entire obstacle for healers and is a true execution test for newer players. But not all healers are created equal, so who is capable of healing against BM Hunters in Season 2? Let's find out. But before we do, I'm sure you're wanting to see rating gains this patch, right? Well, look no further than skillcap.com slash wow. Our team of pro players is working hard to give you new and exclusive arena commentaries for Season 2. These videos will take you into the minds of some of the best players in the world as they break down matchups for you step by step. Our videos are proven to increase your rating, and if you have any hesitation, we offer a money-back guarantee if you don't see the gains you are looking for. Joining today costs as little as $4.99 a month and gives you instant access to everything you need to start your arena journey. So don't delay. Check out skillcap.com slash wow. Let's pour one out for our healers this expansion. They've had it rough, and this patch is no different. Resto Druid seemed to be the Cinderella story of Shadowlands. Coming off a of difficult season one, they're absolutely dominating 915. They are the throughput kings of this expansion. With consistent buffs every patch, Resto Druid healing presents a growing problem for many newer players. There was a small buff to Keeper of the Grove this patch, and now it essentially gives the Druid a form of bubble when they channel Tranquility. This has helped elevate Druids up a tier in RBGs, and although they can't really compare with Holy Paladins and Disc Priests in the 10v10 format, they're gradually inching their way closer. And speaking of getting buffs, Holy Priest looks like a really good healer to main in 915. The patch gave them some fairly meaningful buffs to three of their healing spells. Going into this patch, their hard-casted healing was one of their biggest weaknesses, and with these changes, Holy has been elevated to be more in line. Both Priest healing specs seem to have a really solid role this season, and the ability to freely swap Covenants is a huge deal for Priests, who typically want to play Venther as Holy, Night Fae as Disc, and Necrolord as Shadow. And rounding out our best healers to main this season, we have Resto Shamans. The third slot was pretty tough, as both Resto Shamans and Mistweaver Monks seem to be in contention for third best healer. Setting Resto Shamans apart is their sheer offensive prowess, as their ability to generate pressure with their team is unmatched by other healers. Necrolord has been their primary covenant for the majority of the expansion, but now with covenant swaps available, we might see more experimentation with Night Fae. Or even with Kyrian, since Vesper Totem is able to deal an insane amount of damage combined with the Elysian Dirge conduit. And since both Elemental and Enhance continue to do well this season, you really can't go wrong maining Resto Shaman for the rest of the patch. Alright guys, that wraps it up for what classes to main for the rest of this season. If you want to see a complete picture of the meta this patch, be sure to subscribe because we will be giving you our tier list updates very soon. And if you want to switch mains and don't know where to start, consider checking out skillcap.com slash wow, where we have entire courses dedicated to showing you how to play exactly like a pro player. As always though, thanks for watching, see you soon.